G'day folks, and here's the first in a short library of about half a dozen or so video tutorials on the topic of thermodynamics. And of course we're talking about thermodynamics with respect to chemistry. So thermodynamics is a topic which has great importance in a number of other disciplines, and physics is obviously one of the big ones. But we're going to be focusing on the thermodynamics with respect to chemistry, and that means that we have to look at individual chemical reactions and and we'll be talking about things like the enthalpy and the entropy of different chemical reactions and how that affects the overall free energy of a system so in the next few video tutorials we'll look at the the laws of thermodynamics but i thought we should just get started by looking at some terminology and you can see some of the terms i'm going to introduce in this video tutorial heat temperature system and surroundings, so words that you're already familiar with in day-to-day -day language, but you know, they have a very specific meaning when we're talking about chemical thermodynamics. So we'll look at those, uh, talk about uh, the difference between state functions and path functions, and I'll just introduce words like work, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, free energy, endothermic, exothermic. We'll talk about them in more detail in some of the later video tutorials, but we'll just introduce them here. So temperature, I think, is something that everybody is familiar with, uh, but what does it mean with respect to chemical thermodynamics? It indicates the relative hotness of an object. When two objects are at different temperatures, they're able to transfer heat, and heat will flow from the hotter to the cooler body. So if it's a hot day in summer, we often talk about the temperature or we talk about the heat, and we kind of use those two words interchangeably. So it's a little bit different here. So indicator indicates a temperature indicates the relative hotness of an object. Heat is the energy that transfers from a hotter to a cooler object in this process. So temperature, as you probably know, we can measure and we measure it in thermodynamics in Kelvin. Yeah, don't use Celsius. You're going to run into problems if you ever get a question that gives a temperature in Celsius. Convert it to Kelvin which is really as simple as taking that value and adding 273.15 and that converts it from Celsius to Kelvin uh, and, and use that value for temperature in your calculations. But heat is actually the energy. Okay, so when we talk about heat, we would be measuring it not in Kelvin, we would be measuring it in joules. Yes, yeah? so joules is the SI unit for, for energy, so heat would be measured in joules. Here's another couple of terms, the system and the surroundings. So the concept of the system and the surroundings is extremely important in thermodynamics. And you'll hear me talking about the system and the surroundings with, with various um, uh, different sort of contexts, just depending on the chemical reaction or, or what sort of vessel the chemical reaction is being performed in and, and so on. So combined, the system plus the surroundings basically gives you everything. It gives you the universe. And so you'll also talk, hear us talking about the universe. So we'll have a look at different systems and surroundings as we go through. Okay, but basically the system is going to be, you know, your chemical reaction. And the system, you know, may or may not involve some sort of calorimeter, which might be considered a, you know, a perfect um, insulator, or it might have some heat capacity associated with it and so on. We'll explore that when we talk about calorimetry. <clears throat> there are several classes of thermodynamic systems. Um, depending on what is able to pass between the system and the surroundings. So isolated systems in which heat, work and matter cannot enter or leave the system is known as an isolated system. Okay, so when you actually think about that, that's, that's a challenging environment to kind of try to set up. So some sort of system, you know, completely insulated from the surroundings and the rest of the universe, yeah? Adiabatic systems are those in which heat and matter cannot enter or leave the system. Okay, notice that this is different to the definition of an isolated system with respect to work. Closed systems are those in which heat and work energy can enter or leave the system. But the matter, so the chemicals, the materials, the compounds, the elements, cannot. And finally, an open system in which heat, work, energy and matter can enter or leave the system. Okay, and so in some ways, in a practical sense, most systems are probably 
open systems, but we can manipulate certain things to make them more of a closed system or more of an adiabatic system and so on. There's some terminology there you guys should get used to. And on this slide here, we're just introducing some terminology and many of you will have already heard of these terms before. So the enthalpy of a system, and we talk about exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. And on the left hand side, we have an example of an exothermic reaction. So you've got some sort of system and the system in this case is just a solution. It's some green solution. I have no idea what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and there's some chemical reaction taking place in that system. Um, and you can see that the system before the reaction has a higher energy than the energy after the reaction. Yeah, we say that the enthalpy, it's decreased. Okay, so delta H would have a negative value. This is the exothermic reaction. And endothermic is just the opposite of that. There's some other green reaction there. Again, I have no idea what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. As that chemical reaction takes place, it's actually drawing heat from the environment um, and uh, from the surroundings, if you like. It's a good, good example of how to use that terminology. And you can see that the enthalpy increases. The delta H value for this chemical reaction is a positive value. Okay, so we have uh, three words there, enthalpy, exothermic, and endothermic. We're going to see those a little bit more. So it's also important to acknowledge that the changes uh, in the surroundings, so we were focusing on the system here, so the changes on the surroundings would be exactly the same, but opposite in sign. Okay, that's due to the conservation of energy, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in the next video tutorial. So uh, the internal energy of a system, which is actually a little bit different to enthalpy, and again, we'll get to that in a later tutorial. The internal energy is an example of a state function. I just want to talk about state functions first of all. Yeah. State functions have unique values once the state of the system is defined. This means that the change in the internal energy of a system depends only on the initial and final states of the system. It's kind of independent of the path connecting the states. We often use these um, so analogies to distinguish between state functions and what we call path functions, which I'll get to in a minute. You can see we've got this map here of Australia and New Zealand, and um, there are four different routes for traveling between Dunedin and Darwin. You can see between the orange, green, red, and blue routes, you would actually probably travel a different distance in total. If you're a human being sitting on one of those planes, you, you would actually be traveling different distances. Of course, the distance between where you started and where you finished is exactly the same for all four routes. Okay? State functions would be able to describe the actual distance between the two routes. The path functions might describe the actual distance travelled. Okay, let's think about this from a, a a thermodynamics perspective with respect to chemistry. Okay, we've got some common state functions: temperature, pressure, volume, internal energy, and enthalpy, which we'll distinguish between soon. And then there's a few other things: entropy and Gibbs energy, which we'll get to in video tutorials four and five. State functions are interrelated, and, and knowing any two fixes the others. An example might be the ideal gas equation, where PV, so the pressure multiplied by the volume, actually gives you the temperature. Uh, N is the number of moles and R is a constant. So in knowing any two of those, pressure, volume, or temperature, would give you the other. Okay, So this is an example of a state function. In contrast to the internal energy, uh, functions like heat, which we indicate using uh, the symbol Q, and work, which is W, have no meaning in an equilibrium state. Uh, they're observed only as consequences of a particular process of change. The separate values of heat and work are not predictable from delta U, only their sum. Okay, So you could have a process where there's all sorts of different heat and work processes, and you actually have to add all of those things up 
and some of them might be positive and some of them might be negative to give you the overall value for delta u. So they depend on the way the changes were occurring and thus we call these path functions. And so they're analogous to the details of the routes in the navigation between Dunedin and Darwin that we were talking about before in, in, in that analogy. Okay, whereas the point of departure and the destination, that, that's like the state functions. Anyway, guys, that's just some terminology to sort of get you grounded so we can actually talk about chemical thermodynamics with a bit more sense. All right, I'll chat to you in the next video tutorial.